Hi everyone, it's Rushni and I am jumping on this live um, totally impromptu, totally off the top because I have something on the inside and I got to get it out. I entitled this uh, live video, Trust God and Chill. It was inspired by a conversation that I've been having with a coaching client. This morning, my mom was talking to me, a category five plus hurricane hit and demolished the islands where I'm from. And then two weeks later, another category five plus came and finished up. And my parents both live in the Virgin Islands. I was talking to my mom, which is a rare occurrence now because I really can't just call her. She has to go to a spot where she kind of sort of has Wi-Fi and call me on WhatsApp. And we were t she was talking about how at this point in her life where she's having major milestone birthdays, she and my dad never really thought about the fact that they were going to have to start over. Everything was in line. All of their apartments were rented. All the houses were rented. The business was doing well. Everything was just in a perfect rhythm. They had the perfect tenants. They had the perfect everything. They had government tenants. People were, money was coming in. And then bam, Irma came, the hurricane came, wiped it all out. Had everything structured. They had everything the way that they thought in their human mind, it was gonna work out for their good in the latter days of their life because my parents are getting up there in age, but trust and believe they still cute. And then this hurricane came in the midst of their plans and wiped them out. And yet and still, they have to trust God. She also was pointing out to me that she went to a funeral this morning, or two or three on the island that she's on this weekend, and that people are just dropping dead like flies. Not necessarily from um, airborne illnesses or from accidents but people are dropping dead from stress people are, can't handle the fact that everything that they own all of their belongings are gone everything they put their life's work into is gone she told me a story about a lady cooked for them after irma on september 6th and by the time maria the second hurricane came around two weeks later that lady was dead she just went into her room she wouldn't eat she wouldn't anything she wouldn't anything she just gave up because she could not handle what had been taken from her in the storm. And I just had to say this to you guys. Struggles in your life are tests to see if you trust God. If you really trust him, if you really trust him, when everything is taken from you, when things don't go the way that you expected them to go, when you didn't sign up for this, when you thought you were going left and life took you right, when you had envisioned a certain uh, amount of children in your life and you can't get pregnant, or you have a child in a wheelchair and then you have no other children, okay? If you sign up for a specific thing at your job or a specific career and all of a sudden everything you've put into that career is not turning out the way you wanted it to. When you look at the numbers of your age and they start going up higher and higher but you look back and you start taking inventory of what's come of the life that you've invested this time in and it has not turned out the way you have. When a hurricane comes and takes everything you own, all this stuff behind is gone including the roof and the ceiling and the fan gone and you are in your latter years when you feel like everything is set up do you trust him if you're frantic and you're to and fro then i suggest for you to pay attention to whether or not that is a person that trusts god because if you trust god it's like looking back and realizing that when you fall he gonna catch you and so you trust in the fall that the fall is worth falling if that makes any sense, because you don't have to catch yourself because you can't catch yourself. And if you think you can, you are in error and you're going to fail every time. It's going to bring anxiety. It's going to bring depression. And this is something I have to tell myself all the time. It's going to bring all of the negative coping. You're going to go into your room. You're going to shut down. You're not going to eat. You're not going to, you're not going to drink. You're not going to sleep and you're going to die. I mean, figuratively, clearly I'm saying, but you have to question yourself. When you look back, do you trust that he'll catch you? When the situation isn't going the way you thought it was going to be. When I was pregnant with my son at the 20 week ultrasound, they gave me a negative report. The only way at the 20 week ultrasound that I could see that God was going to work all things out for my good was he was going to heal my son. And so that's all I prayed about from 20 weeks until 36 plus when he was born. After he was born and the medical stuff was still happening, I continued to pray. 
probably all through the first year of my son's life and maybe into the second. I don't even remember because it was all a blur. The only way in my small mind I could see that God was going to work it out for my good is that he was going to heal him. Here I am now five years plus into being a mom of a son with special needs. And I look back on this thing and I realize that God is working it out for my good because if I did not have the child that I had, I could not be sitting here talking to you guys, encouraging you and telling you how to make it through tough times. I could not do it. God changed who I am and he's continuing to change who I am. I am a totally different person on a DNA level. And so in that way, God is and continues to work it out for my good. He may not heal my son in the sense that I see healing in the small human mind sense of one day my son jumps up out of a wheelchair and gets to walk in, talking and, you know, doing trigonometry. I don't know. But if he does it, do I trust that the fall is worth falling and he is catching me? Do I see the perspective change that he has done inside of me to realize that this fall that he has assigned me to fall is working things out for my good and that this is him catching me? This change in me is him catching me. Do I trust him enough to give him my son and watch him work it out? Like, do you trust him enough to give him your job, your worries, like your the, the issues you have with your parents, the issues you have with your coworkers, the issues you have with your spouse, the issues you have with your friends, the issues you have with your home? Do you really believe that he can catch you? Or are you too busy trying to catch yourself and causing yourself anxiety and stress, not having the coping mechanisms to deal with the real trials of life and watching things die in front of your eyes? Trust him and chill. The way this life is set up, none of us get out alive. <laughs> Sorry, I had to say that, but it's true. And if you don't have anything bad happen in your life yet, you know how the old people say, keep living. Keep living. I don't mean that as a threat. I mean that as a truth. It's coming. And so how can you cope with the, with the things that are coming? How can you cope? The Bible says that you cast all your cares. Cast them. It means to actively take that worry and that stress and that thing that you are holding on to and chuck it over there. Know that it's not for you. You don't even want it to be near you. Fall back and know that no matter the outcome, whether it's the outcome you think you were supposed to get or not, mm -mm -mm, I just blessed myself. Whether it's what you saw in your plan or not. I used to have a um, friend and, and he used to say, man plan and jaw laugh, which is man plans and God laughs. Because we as men, we have our little plans. You know, my mom always say, Rushni, you 41 little years. You know why? Because she way past 41. And so we as human beings, we have our little plans. And we come to God with our little plans. Like he's a vending machine. And we walk up with our little coin of faith. And we say, okay, God, I want a Coca-Cola outcome. And we put our little faith in and we press the button. And what comes out of the vending machine? A Pepsi. A freaking giraffe. He don't even care what you ask him for sometimes. He'd be like, Coke, what Coke? Okay, but do you trust him when he gives you the Pepsi, when he gives you the giraffe, when he gives you the negative report from the doctor? Do you trust him when the job that you thought was going to be your way of escape from the hardships of this life calls you and tells you don't come in anymore? Do you trust him when the relationship that you thought you had signed up for ain't going to work out? Person you in a relationship with got a whole different idea. Do you trust him when you wake up one morning and by that night, a natural disaster has taken every physical thing you've worked for. Can you watch him take you through fire and know that he's going to come, you're going to come out on the other end because he's going to catch you. You don't have to catch you. You will not catch you. Get from somebody whose last name is Cope. The best coping mechanism is to know you can't cope. So to give up your need to be in control of the coping and let God do the coping for you. Fall back knowing that no matter what, 
God, the creator of all things, the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end, the person who was, is, and is to come, who made everything in your eye gate, who made you, okay? who created and designed all of this. The fact that my brain can say to move these fingers, these eyes can look out here and see this, this telephone that I'm talking to you guys on, strangers on the internet. That God who inspired man to do all of that thing has the ability and is concerned enough to catch you. He has taught me whew, how to remain relatively sane <laughs> and to have joy unspeakable and full of glory in the midst of the chaos. You know why? Because no matter what happens, you guys, I gotta go, because I feel like I'm about to cry. No matter what happens, my intention is to trust God and to chill, because he got me.